It's been over 15 years since Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, the last entry in the series to hone in on the RPG elements many fans of the series love. While the hole for another game like the GameCube and Nintendo 64 classics may soon be filled by the upcoming Origami King, indie title Bug Fables has set out to do that itself right now. Although the game has been infesting home PCs since November of last year, it's finally crawling onto the Switch. So does it stand up to the series it tries to emulate, or does it fail to stick the landing? From the start, Bug Fables throws you into the world in classic RPG form. You must set out to find the Everlasting Sapling, a treasure said to bring eternal life to the user, which is pretty understandable given how short a bug's lifespan is. In each of the first three chapters, you journey to find three artifacts which will aid the Ant Queen in locating the sapling. In the game's final four chapters, well, let's just say you run into some trouble with keeping the artifacts in your possession. The overall plot is interesting and fun to follow, even if it's a bit simple without any major twists. The biggest issue I have is that there's a bit too much dialogue at times. I often found myself losing interest midway through what the critters had to say, which, to be fair, is certainly true to the spirit of Paper Mario. In a departure from the Paper Mario series, Bug Fables ditches the notion of recruiting partners during the journey. Instead, from very early on, you control three characters. V, the timid bee, Kabu, the strong beetle, and Leaf, the magical ant. While there is an argument to be made that V is the main character per se, it's mostly an ensemble cast, allowing you to swap to any character at any moment with the other two following closely behind. And hey, if you press the X button to swap characters, they even do a little spin. I'm sure John will be happy about that. The overworld has you platforming in order to reach your next destination with the use of V, Kabu, and Leaf's special overworld moves. From the start, you have access to a boomerang throw, a horn slash, and a freezing power. These abilities aid in puzzle solving to unlock gates or turn rotating bridges that you need to progress. For example, Leaf can freeze a drop of falling water, while Kabu can use his horn to hit it onto a button that opens a gate. V can use her boomerang to turn cranks that either rotate bridges or lift platforms. Over the course of the game, each member of the trio unlocks another ability that leads to more puzzle solving and platforming, adding to the interactivity of the overworld. The overworld was fun to traverse, even if I found myself backtracking a bit in places. The addition of a fast travel system earlier in the game would have been nice, but it was a welcome addition as I crossed into the final chapters of the game. Along your journey, you come across lots of colorful creatures, many of which will engage you in battle. And this is certainly where the game shines, emulating the classic Paper Mario battle formula while adding its own little twists as well. Each member of your trio has a standard move of their own. V can throw a boomerang with the well-timed A press, Kabu can slash people with his horns similar to how Mario charges up a hammer, and Leaf can send a magic ice pillar at an enemy after quickly pressing a randomly designated button on the controller. While each bug has its own health points counter, the group shares what's known as teamwork points, which stands in the place of flower points from the Mario series. Used when performing more complicated special moves, these attacks are fun to pull off, with perfect timing rewarded. While on defense, timing is also key as many enemy attacks can be nullified or severely reduced with perfect blocking. This time-tested combat was satisfying 15 years ago and it remains fun today. What's different about Bug Fables combat stems from the lack of partners. You see, instead of picking a single partner to join alongside you in battle, all three are present at all times, with no substitutions available. However, at the beginning of your turn, you can choose to rotate the order of the characters, opting to lead with whoever has more health and is more likely to draw enemy fire. Additionally, Bug Fables introduces Turn Relay, a mechanic that allows V, Kabu, or Leaf to forfeit their turn in battle and give it to a partner. So for example, if there are two flying enemies in battle, either Leaf or Kabu will need to give their turn to V in order for her to make use of her airborne boomerang to knock enemies down. This added mechanic leads to less frustrating situations where teammates could perhaps feel like sitting ducks, or bugs. The game's combined willingness to stick to the classic battle system while also adding its own flair makes for combat that's just as fun as it was on the GameCube and Nintendo 64. I'll never get tired of attempting the perfectly timed blocks to negate enemy attacks, and the team behind Bug Fables has kept that satisfying move completely intact. And like Paper Mario, Bug Fables features badge points which dictate how many stat boosting or otherwise gameplay changing badges the bugs may equip at once. Badges can be found all across Bagaria, either out in the fields while adventuring in shops to buy with money, or rewards from NPCs upon completion of quests. Badge points are shared across the whole party, meaning you need to carefully decide who gets to wear what badge, based on who may need it most. For instance, I decided to give V a badge that allowed her to attack twice every turn, with the second move being at reduced damage. This either allowed me to knock down two flying enemies every turn without wasting a turn relay, or gave me the option to use her second attack to spy on the enemy adding it to this game's version of the Tatalog, enabling me to see the enemy's health bar. Badges can be combined in stacks similar to the Thousand Year Door, and there seems to be just as much variety and depth to it here as well. 
in my playthrough, I didn't end up placing too much emphasis on badges, so they aren't really essential. However, even when only occasionally switching them up, I found it fun and exciting to see how my battle strategy would change due to their effects. I came across quite a few badges over the course of the journey, with some being particularly fun to find thanks to my party's overworld abilities. Like the battle system, it's nearly the same as it was in Paper Mario, and I see that as an absolute win. Artistically speaking, Bug Fables has a lot going for it, but I found the execution to be rather lackluster. Bulgaria, the world in which the game inhabits, seemingly takes place on our own Earth, with pencils, rulers, books, and cans spread across the land as makeshift bridges or structures. Unfortunately, the 3D models of much of the landscape are rather static and uninteresting, lacking the sort of liveliness that I remember seeing when I would dig for bugs in the grass as a kid. The models are a bit blocky and lack polygons, which in a Paper Mario game is more forgiving since they are usually covered with interesting textures and details, but I found Bulgaria to be rather plain and simple. It's easy to forgive with Bug Fables coming out of a small indie studio and not a juggernaut like Nintendo, but it definitely affected my experience playing, as many of the locales visited have not left a lasting impression on me. Musically, Bug Fables can be a bit hit or miss, but I've been mostly impressed. Like the rest of the game, it obviously draws inspiration from Paper Mario, and that's where it typically shines. For example, take the little jingle that plays when you win a battle. While not identical, it's similar enough to the one from the Thousand Year Door that it gave me a nice nostalgia trip every time. I haven't been humming the tunes around the house like I have with previous indie titles, but the music is good enough to set the mood when it needs to and to accompany fun gameplay sections like the battles. As far as replayability is concerned, Bug Fables features a variety of side quests, achievements, and collectibles that I've barely scratched the surface of. It's all very nicely laid out in lists, giving you easy access to your current quests. The few side quests I've completed have been short and sweet, allowing me to complete them in between the larger arcs of the main storyline. Additionally, they have been rather rewarding, supplementing my wallet and enabling me to buy a few extra items to stay healthy in battle. While the game doesn't come close in length to what a JRPG may offer, it sticks rather closely with the Paper Mario series, clocking in around 2-3 hours per chapter, or around 15-20 to 20 hours of story content. While it unfortunately spends a decent portion in dialogue, there's enough gameplay that it really only becomes tiresome near the beginning and endings of chapters. Overall, I found Bug Fables to be fun, filling a void in gaming I haven't experienced since my last playthrough of The Thousand Year Door. While it doesn't reach quite the same levels of polish that the Paper Mario series does, it's a respectable effort by a small indie team that shouldn't be overlooked. The timing is perhaps a bit unfortunate with the surprise announcement of Origami King, which itself may be a return to the classic formula, but for a guaranteed return down memory lane, look no further. I liked Bug Fables, despite the long dialogue that occasionally seemed to drag on forever. It takes the classic formula and brings it into a whole new world and decade that I've been dying to play on the go with my Switch. Thanks for watching and be sure to subscribe to Game Explained for more on Nindies, the Switch, and other things gaming.